The change began around Thanksgiving. By December 1st, Stargirl Caraway had become the most popular person in school. How did it happen? Was it the cheerleading? The last football game of the season was her first as a cheerleader. The grandstand was packed. Students, parents, alumni. Never had so many people come to a football game to see her cheerleader. She did all the regular cheers and routines, and more. In fact, she never stopped cheering. While the other girls were taking breaks, she went on jumping and yelling. She roamed. Areas that had always been ignored, the far ends of the grandstand, the spectators behind the goalposts, the snack bar parents found themselves within their own arm-pumping cheerleader. She ran straight across the 50-yard line and joined the other team's cheerleaders. We laughed as they stood there with their mouths open. She cheered in front of the player's bench and was shooed away by a coach. At halftime, she played her ukulele with the band. In the second half, she got acrobatic. She did cartwheels and backflips. At one point, the game was stopped and three zebra-shirted officials ran toward one end zone. She had chinnied up a goalpost. Tightrope walked out to the middle of the crossbar and was now standing there with her arms raised in a touchdown sign. She was commanded down to a standing ovation and flashing cameras. As we filed out afterward, no one mentioned how boring the game itself had been. No one cared that the electrons had lost again. In his column the next day, the sports editor of the Mika Times referred to her as the best athlete on the field. We couldn't wait for basketball season. Was it a Hillary Kimball backlash? Several days after the birthday song, I heard a shout down from the hallway. Don't! I ran. A crowd was gathered at the top of the stairwell. They were all staring at something. I pushed my way through. Hillary Kimball was standing at the upper landing, grinning. She was holding Cinnamon the rat, dangling by its tail over the railing, nothing but space between it and the first floor. Stargirl was on the steps below, looking up. The scene froze. The bell for the next class rang. Nobody moved. Stargirl said nothing, merely looked. The eight toes of Cinnamon's front paws splayed apart. Its tiny, unblinking eyes were bulging, black as cloves. Again, a voice rang out. Don't, Hillary! Suddenly, Hillary dropped it. Someone screamed, but the rat fell only to the floor at Hillary's feet. She sent Stargirl a final sneer and left. Was it Dory Dilson? Dory Dilson was a brown-haired ninth grader who wrote poems in a loose-leaf notebook half as big as herself and whose name nobody knew until the day she sat down at Stargirl's table for lunch. Next day, the table was full. No longer did Stargirl eat lunch or walk the hallways or do anything else at school alone. Was it us? Did we change? Why didn't Hillary Kimball drop the rat to its death? Did she see something in her eyes? Whatever the reason, by the time we returned from Thanksgiving break, it was clear that the change had occurred. Suddenly, Stargirl was not dangerous, and we rushed to embrace her. Calls of Stargirl flew down the hallways. We couldn't say her name often enough. It tickled us to mention her name to strangers and watch the expressions on their faces. Girls liked her. Boys liked her. And most remarkable, the attention came from all kinds of kids. Shy mice and princesses. Jocks and eggheads. We honored her by imitation. A chorus of ukulele strummed in the lunchroom. Flowers appeared on classroom desks. One day it rained and a dozen girls ran outside to dance. The pet shop at the Mika Mall ran out of rats. The best chance for us to express our admiration came in the first week of December. We were gathered in the auditorium for the annual oratorical contest. Sponsored by the Arizona League of Women Voters, the event was open to any high school student who cared to show his or her stuff as a public speaker. The microphone was yours for seven minutes. Talk about anything you like the winner would move on to the district competition. Usually only four or five students enter the contest at MAHS. That year there were 13, including Stargirl. You didn't have to be a judge to see that she was far and away the best. She gave an animated speech, a performance, really titled Elf Owl, 
Call me by my first name. Her gray-brown homesteader's dress was the color of her subject. I couldn't see her freckles from the audience, but I imagined them dancing on her nose as she flicked her head this way and that. When she finished, we stomped on the floor and whistled and shouted for more. While the judges went through the charade of conferring, a film was shown. It was a brief documentary about the previous year's state finals. It featured the winner, a boy from Yuma. The most riveting moments of the film came not during the contest, but during its aftermath. When the boy arrived back at Yuma High, the whole school mobbed him in the parking lot. Banners, cheerleaders, band music, confetti, streamers. Pumping his arms in the air, the returning hero rode their shoulders into school. The film ended, the lights went on, and the judges proclaimed Stargirl the winner. She would now go on to the district competition in Red Rock, they said. The state finals would be held in Phoenix in April. Again and again, we whooped and whistled. Such was the acclamation we gave her in those last weeks of the year, but we also gave something to ourselves. <laughs>